BAFTA Scotland Awards 2021. Please welcome your host, Edith Bowman. Hello, everybody. Hi. Really high voice there. I'm Edith Bowman. I am beyond delighted, as you can probably tell, in fact, slightly giddy uh, to be here in Glasgow for the BAFTA Scotland Awards to salute and celebrate the wonderful achievements of our screen industries over the past year. A big warm welcome to you, wherever, however you are watching us. Thank you very much for joining us. And I have to say that we are all in very good company. We have some wonderful guests who are joining us, the likes of Glenda Jackson, legends Glenda Jackson and Brian Cox will join from slightly further afield. And check this out. Hello, audience. Hi! Yes! Real actual people, proper real humans in a room all together celebrating. It's wonderful. Our specially invited live audience are wonderful nominees. I think you should all give yourself a wonderful round of applause for your team. Please well done. The pandemic has not stopped our fantastic industry from moving forward since last we met. Uh, Glasgow's famous Kelvin Hall has been developed into a major new film and TV studio. In May, Regional Screen Scotland's mobile cinema returned to the road, bringing the best titles to our rural and island communities. At First Stage Studios in Edinburgh, production wrapped on the drama The Rig, starring Ian Glenn and Martin Comston and hot on the heels of Good Omens 2. Amazon Studios announced the adaptation of Neil Gaiman's Anansi Boys would be the next production in there. In August, BBC One's vigil with Saran Jones and Rose Leslie dived, see what I did there, onto our screens, becomes the only one, I promise, uh, becoming the most watched new drama in three years. And when we were allowed back to the cinemas, Bliss, pure bliss. Uh, we all watched Scotland play a starring role, you might not know this, in No Time to Die, when the Highlands doubled for a snowy Norway. I love a bit of film trivia. I, love it. I, like, I, like, was a, I saw an eyebrow move there from someone who was like, wow, I didn't know that. Well, now you do. Uh, the Audience Award in partnership with Screen Scotland returns. Now, this year, the vote was for your favourite Scott on screen. And the wonderful Sanjeev Kohli will be here in a bit to tell us all about that. Even on a starry occasion like this, we can't forget that BAFTA Scotland is a charity with the ambition to increase the appreciation of film, TV and games and improve access to working in these industries by providing major learning and new talent initiatives throughout the year. And what a fantastic job Jude and her team do. I would like to give them a round of applause. Now then, before we have a little montage of what these talented folk have been up to, I don't know about you, but I love a montage, we would like to say a massive thank you to all core funders, including BBC Scotland, STV, Channel 4 and Screen Scotland for their continued support. So I just want to say good luck to everybody nominated with us today. Uh, let's have a reminder of some of your wonderful work. Let's have a look. Good morning, Your Lordship. It's a very diverse mix of people. So you're seeing things you'll probably never ever see. That was the big, not me. There's nothing more personable and lovable than a mature Scottish lady. Oh, my lord! Our hearts just, like, go on. That happens to women in their 50s. We're going to need a special group to move at extraordinary speed. So, again, if you're needing some close protection, I think I got that <laughs> bit, but... Hey, 
I'm happy. I'm a punch the man who says I'm not. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> People in your social class think all sorts of things that aren't right. This is it. This is my life. Welcome to Windsor. I think they're giving me something. You have to give it back. It should have been me. I haven't sweated like this in a very long time. We've been lucky today. So many faces from that montage uh, joining us this evening is brilliant. Now, tonight's first award is very showbiz because it recognises the year's best in entertainment. Now, waiting to hail the nominee and name the winner is a presenter who lights up Channel 4 on A Place in the Sun, which gained her a coveted place in our Audience Award. It's Port Glasgow's own Jean Johansson. <laughs> How good is it to see humans? Isn't it? Lovely to see you all. And Lawrence's wig. <laughs> Fabulous, dear. <laughs> right, these shows reflect the quality and range on offer in this category, with a series that takes the very best traditions of children's television and channels them into something fresh. A comedy about a public service that's become a national institution, and the multi-talented Susan Kalman showing us the country we only thought we knew. Let's take a look. Entertainment. The brilliant world of Tom Gates. Trust. We sing the songs that guarantee to depress. What you gonna do? What you gonna do about it? Whoa, oh, what you gonna do? Scott Squad. The chief does uh, democracy. Always, you know, what is it? The tradition after the match, we go and rip up the pitch. We do. Yeah. Yes. That if I was, was with you and you were with me, there'd be kind of mutual protection there. Surely. Yeah. If, that, that that would be the photograph yeah. of the ages, wouldn't it? Yeah. You and I swinging from the bar. <laughs> I mean, I'd hoit you obviously. <laughs> <laughs> that to get up there a wee bit, but you know, we could, we, I, and I could pull it down because with my, yeah, as yeah, we've yeah, established, yeah, yeah. with my extra weight. Why don't you hoit me up? Minister. Just don't leave me there. Okay? Just don't leave you there. Yeah. Make sure you there get right. me down again. There we go. Get you up there. Leave you there, England. We're all on the train back up. Oh, I forgot the First Minister! Quickly, go back to Wembley! <laughs> My feet are almost off the ground! Even a little bell will take your feet off the ground. Secret Scotland. <laughs> it's a lot easier than the big heavy one, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> OK, I think we'll stop there. <sighs> I'll tell you something, Ruth. I haven't sweated like this in a very long time. My heart monitor is telling me something's wrong. And the BAFTA Scotland Award goes to the brilliant world of Tom Gates. <laughs> Thank you so much, BAFTA. Wow. Oh. Um, uh, I just want to say uh, thank you very much to the jury. Thank you very much, BAFTA. Um, this is actually for our kids, because I went on a school trip, and you better speak. I'm a bit overwhelmed. <laughs> um, but, you know, he's got five kids. I've got two kids. And, you know, you do that thing as a parent where you go and you try and help out at school. And, you know, there were 600 kids all sitting, held captive by this incredible woman, Liz Pichon, and there was no phones. I've got my phone, sorry. No phones, no iPads, nothing. And they, she had insisted they all have a piece of paper and they all had a pencil. And she got every single of those 600 kids doodling and drawing and creating. And I don't know, the hairs just went up on the back of my spine and I thought, she's amazing. The kids are having the best time. I'm sure we could do something. So I phoned my friend Ken and said, 
I think we've got to do this. Let's see if we can turn it into something. And I'm incredibly grateful that he said yes to me. Um, he runs a fantastic animation company called Wild Child in Sterling. And together with some amazing people, um, I just want to you know, thank Ken and his team, Sue Ann, George, our director, obviously the most amazing, Liz Pichon, who has, um, is right at the center of everything we do as well, and Ben Ward, and all the animators who are working in Scotland and across the country. Um, thank you, everybody. This means a huge amount for children everywhere, this show. And uh, it's also not for clever kids, this show. It's about unlocking the creativity of kids absolutely everywhere. So I'll shut up. Thank you very much. You go. <laughs> <And> <laughs> just say one well, thing. I'll just say thank you to Arabella um, for phoning me. <laughs> and uh, um, also to say thank you to um, everyone uh, for voting for this um, category and putting us in the entertainment category. It's wonderful to be there. Um, I'd also like to say thank you to Screen Scotland, to Sky, and our um, head of kids, uh, Lucy Murphy, uh, the commissioning editor there, um, Ian France, and also to um, uh, D David Smith and um, all the team at Screen Scotland. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks and everyone. I know we're not meant to speak for long, but thank you. Wonderful stuff. What a great first award. Our next award celebrates a field in which Scots producers are global players. We're talking about games. And someone who can do that all day is here to announce this year's winner. Please welcome present our podcaster, BBC Social's all round games geek, the brilliant Claire Lynn. Hi. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Hello, I'm very good, thank you. Now, quickly before you get to the nominees, because you had a, a BAFTA guru session, didn't you, with, yes. with the, uh, the nominees. How was that? Were you in your element? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> As you said, I am a nerd, uh, which is exactly why I'm here. It's always been my dream to uh, present a nerdy award uh, for a bunch of nerds, so it's, <laughs> it's quite wonderful. In good company. I'm in good, yeah, here we are. I've made it, mum and dad, I've made it. Um, it was absolutely wonderful. The panel was great. And what really struck me uh, about the developers was the fact that they had so much passion um, when it came to creating these weird and wonderful worlds that mm. we find ourselves immersed in. And as you know, and as everyone knows here, um, this has been the year to immerse ourselves in an alternative reality, that's for sure. Um, so we've got a major police investigation. We've got a two-headed dog. And we have a synthwave fever dream, which kind of sounds like my night out uh, last weekend. Uh, the dogs loved it. The two-headed dog was wild, man. Um, but yes, um, they're actually the summary of the three contenders for this year's top game. So let's take a look. Game. Murder mystery machine. Fogs. Solas one two eight. The Scotland Award goes to Solas One Two Eight. Um, 
Wow. <laughs> yeah, we, I don't think we were expecting this. No. This was a, a three-month passion project that went a bit wrong and took 18 months. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'd just like to thank everyone who was involved in this. We had some amazing beta testers. We had such a lot of people help from the accessibility community to try and make this game all about color, as colorblind friendly and as playable by people with uh, motor, motor issues or neurodiversity issues as possible. So, yeah, and thanks to Jamesy who made the, the Synthwave Fever Dream, which is a good, a good description of it. And thank you so much to our publishers, Armour Game Studios, for taking a punt on what is still a very weird game that I'm not, <laughs> I'm surprised exists. <laughs> you got anything to add, uh, Stephen? Just thanks very much, Tom, for bringing me on board. Um, I'd just like to thank my, uh, my family, my wonderful wife, for supporting me all the way through this. And thank you to Armour Games for helping us make this happen. Thank thanks you. Sir. Thanks, everyone. Congratulations. Don't forget the reward. <laughs> Congratulations. Now, number one to stand still, BAFTA Scotland is making a change to the audience award because you, that's you, the viewers, have been choosing your favourite Scot on screen. Here with more details is a man who's soon to be well known, as well known in Korea as he is in Craigland, due to a global audience searching for Squid Game on Netflix and finding Still Game. I know what I'd rather watch. Please welcome the fabulous Sanjeev Kohli! Two things quickly before we do official business. Yes. Um, huge congratulations on Limbo and all the team and your involvement on that. I thought it was an amazing Clearly work, my so. two minutes on screen was structural. Um, no, but it's an amazing, amazing film. It's a weird one. I, I did three days on Limbo um, and uh, you never know what the thing's going to look like until you see it back. And I saw it back and it was beautiful and stark and funny and poignant and amazing. And I think Ben Sharrock is someone who is nominated tonight in two categories. We've got two of the main actors nominated um, without being biased. It, well, I'm not being biased, I'm not, I'm not nominated myself, um, but it deserves to win all the plaudits. It is a beautiful piece of work and I'm very proud to have had two minutes and 21 seconds in it. <laughs> <laughs> also, you do know that this is not a Zoom, it's not some from the waist down. Because those trousers look kind of familiar. They, well, yeah, well, I'm daring to rewear, you just. I like it. I got the, I got the WhatsApp. Um, so these are my BAFTA trousers. I wore, thanks for noticing, by the way. Yeah. I wore these last year. I can't pretend that this has been worn before because I bought it from Debenhams, other stores available, <laughs> two weeks before lockdown kicked in. So this is the first chance. It doesn't go with any of my onesies. So this is the first chance, <laughs> first chance I've had to wear it. But like I say, rewearing my trousers, that is how far I'm prepared to go to dare to rewear and to meet this planet. Look very place. dapper. Thank you very much. Amazing. Now, this award, tell us a little bit about it, because there's, there's a slight changes to it. Yes, yes. Well, in the spirit of COP26, I thought I might be able to recycle last year's script, but no, not possible. As you yourself suggested earlier, the good people at BAFTA Scotland have changed the focus of the audience award this time around. So, in 2021, which is now, it will go to your favourite Scott on screen. Now, when I say your, I mean the thousands of you who voted via the BBC Scotland website. And when I say Scot, that means anyone born in Scotland who identifies as Scottish, having spent a considerable amount of time here. And when I say considerable, I mean longer than Elvis Presley at Prestwick Airport. <laughs> now the remit was wide. Anything from the more traditional genres of film or drama or comedy to web-based series, quiz shows, factual documentaries or coverage of live events. Although we did draw the line at specialist adult content made on webcams. We had to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> and the result was a shortlist of six very deserving and very wide-ranging nominees. Now, if you find yourself wondering, as I know you will, how the landmark performance by a disarmingly handsome and deceptively young Asian actor as Jimmy in Falling for Figaro hasn't made it onto the shortlist, that's because only work broadcast or released between the end of June 2020 and the end of June 2021 is eligible. That's what they told me, and I have chosen to believe it. <laughs> now, each of the six shortlisted performers has a famous face to champion their cause, no expense spared. Very soon, the one and only Lorraine Kelly, LK Today, will big up the contribution of Lawrence Cheney. Yeah. Now, as you can't fail to have noticed, RuPaul's Drag Race UK has taken the country by storm in a typhoon of fabulousness. And the winner of season two was this Glaswegian force of nature making her the first Scottish queen since Mary lost her napper. <laughs> so will Lawrence 
win this bing, bang, bong, gong. Before that, though, is first nominee David Carlyle. Now, It's a Sin was the most binge-watched show in the entire history of Channel 4. And in amongst a host of very special performances, David's incredibly funny and touching portrayal of Gregory Gloria Finch still managed to stand out. So good, in fact, that his siblings Robert and Belinda Carlyle will have to watch their backs. <laughs> David is about to become a household name if he hasn't already. And singing his praises, here is one of his amazing co-stars from It's a Sin, Lydia West. Audience Award in partnership with Screen Scotland. So what's it like to work with David Carlyle? Uh, it's amazing. He's such a generous, sensitive, kind actor. And I just think he just listens and he brought so much of, I think what, what was so successful about, about the role was that he brought so much of himself to it and so much of so much heart to Gregory and you really, Gregory was one of the first to go and we just, we fell in love with Gregory in, in the short time that, that before before he went. Um, and he's my favourite Scott um, on screen because he is funny, he's kind, he's fabulous, he's sensitive and he's caring. David Carlyle, it's a sin. Have you ever had sex with animals? What? Have you ever had sex with animals? I don't understand. It said in the questionnaire, have you ever had sex with animals? But why? They don't think that it's tuberculosis. Then what is it? <laughs> what do you think it is? Well, how do I describe Lawrence Cheney? A force of nature, uh, obviously hugely talented and extremely funny, but so kind-hearted and very, very rude and naughty, I'm happy to say. Uh, when I appeared as a judge on Drag Race, which was amazing, um, I just couldn't take my eyes off Lawrence. There's obviously real charisma, but also vulnerability and such a big heart. Lawrence has actually been a guest on my show and brought huge energy and, and fun to the set and up for anything, charming and hilarious. Lawrence is my favourite Scott on screen because they're, well, they're the full package. And I think this is just the beginning. There needs to be a Cheney chat show and, and game shows and, and big overblown TV specials with sumptuous costumes and sketches and razor sharp jokes and all of that. I think Lawrence is this generation Stanley Baxter and we have been waiting a long, long time for the next Scottish global superstar. Lawrence is the real deal. And it's time for the part of the show where we get to the bottom of your problems. Did Lawrence you Cheney, RuPaul's today? Drag Race UK. Bottom! Lawrence is giving me full Michelle McManus with a pink rinse. This morning we have a very, very, very special word of the day. It begins with an F. An F? Can you guess what the word is at home? Phone calls! We're going to help solve all your incy bincy problems. There's nothing more personable and lovable than a mature Scottish lady. All right. <laughs> and that's just our first two. Sanjeev will be back later for the next instalment of the Audience Award. Our next category honours the best single documentary of the past 12 months to review the winner, a recipient of multiple BAFTA Scotland Awards and yet again this year, a key contributor to News and Current Affairs nominee, The Trial of Alex Salmon. Presenter, journalist, author, producer, genuine national treasure. And if you ever saw her doing Thriller at the end of Newsnight, one hell of a dancer. And my former DJ partner, it is the fabulous Kirsty Walk. Lovely to see you. you too. And my main claim to fame is that very recently I got undressed with Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, BAFTA Scotland. It is a real pleasure to be with you to present this award. The nominees introduce us to Scotland's great forgotten poets, explore the searing impact of murder, and debate the hot topic of the men and the money behind Scotland's monuments. Big subjects, and here's a small taste of them. 
single documentary, Beyond Burns. I see poetry as part of the national conversation. Poetry should be part of the blethering about who we are and what we want to do with our lives. It shouldn't be something that's away off in the corner and that nobody understands. I really believe that poetry holds up a mirror to a nation's heart and soul. Poetry is the language of being human. The Dark Shadow of Murder. I want to scream Moira so loudly that it reverberates around the world and penetrates to every part of the universe so that somehow, somewhere, she can hear me. And maybe she can send some sort of sign that she knows that she doesn't hurt anymore, that she's at peace. Scotland, slavery and statues. This history is not about recrimination. It's, it's about living together as one people, one nation. We can't change the past, but we can change the consequences such as racism for the better. Great nominees. <laughs> and the BAFTA award goes to Scotland, Slavery and Statues. Thank you so much for this. I really appreciate it, BAFTA and the jurors. It's really important, I think, for, for us who are producing and directing. I mean, for me, it was four years. Um, to have acknowledgement in the industry, so thank you so much. Um, what my mission was, was to try and make a documentary that um, made people realize how Scotland's involvement in slavery is um, totally relevant now in the present. So when I met Sir Jeff Palmer, and who's you know descendant of those enslaved, and he was, um, starting his mission to try and change the wording on the plaque as a Melville monument in Edinburgh. I just knew how to capture it and had no idea what the outcome was, but I started capturing it and it was, that was about four or five years ago. And um, yeah, so I just want to say a big thank you to Sir Jeff Palmer, um, Adam Ramsey, Bobby Dundas and all the other contributors who put their trust in me because they probably had no idea what the outcome of the documentary would be like. So thanks for that. Thanks also to David Harron from BBC Scotland for commissioning it. And also um, the commission was um, given to me and had two and a half months to make it. So um, I teamed up with Firecrest Films. So I just want to say a big thanks to Scott Harrison here, the executive producer from Firecrest, because it was such a big a mission to make it. And also thanks so much to Anthea Harvey and Kerry Isfrin for the edit and the um, my um, assistant producer, Winifred Kukuris. Thanks. And just want to add thanks to our amazing production management team, Charlie, Emma um, and Ash for getting us over the line on this. Uh, the post teams at Firecrest, uh, Blazing Griffin at Savalas and uh, Nicole and Ian at Firecrest for their unending support. Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> Now we've reached the award for Specialist Factual category, which includes programmes across history, science, the arts and natural history. To present this award, the performer recognised in Actor Film category tonight for his role in the quite brilliant drama Run. While earlier this year he was truly majestic as Henry VIII in Channel 5's Anne Boleyn. Please welcome Mark Stanley. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, enjoying this evening and sharing it with you is uh, it's an honour. I'm, uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to present Specialist Factual this evening. Uh, two of the three nominees take us deep into the lives of remarkable Scottish artists. The third provides an extraordinary insight into our wildlife and landscape. Uh, let's take a look at their fantastic work. Television scripted. Yeah. 
Habibi. <laughs> at the second, but I'm sure we'll oh, get that on. up there very, very quickly <laughs> indeed. Um, if we just, I'm just, here it comes right now, and roll VT. Specialist right. Factory, sponsored by Deloitte. Eye of the Storm. I really had got to the point where I was thinking, painting's over for me. Because of the problems with my eye, I can't paint the way I normally paint. My son, who is an art historian, he pushed and pushed and pushed at me. I felt I had to do something. Ivor Cutler by Katie Tunstall. Ivor Cutler. I'm happy, I'm happy. Humorist, poet, singer, songwriter. I'm happy, I'm happy. Teacher, author. Artist. I'm happy, I'm happy, and I'll punch the man who says I'm not. Sticker and plastic fly obsessive. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. Just like his work, he was hard to define. I spend a lot of time on my own. My life in the wild. But I'm never lonely. There's a lovely phrase in uh, Africa. It takes a village to raise a child. And I would say that's also true for being here in the West Coast. It's taken a village to help me out to become the wildlife cameraman that I am now. Uh, and the BAFTA Scotland Award goes to... Eye of the Storm. I really wasn't expecting that. I'd like to thank uh, BAFTA Scotland and Mark Thomas at Creative Scotland and David Harron at BBC Scotland and pay tribute to uh, James Morrison, the remarkable landscape painter who allowed me to document the last uh, two years of his life at that time. Obviously, I wasn't aware that he, we would lose him as we did last year. And so James allows us to see the landscape differently. And I think that's what's so remarkable about his work. And I hope everybody here can, and, and watching can enjoy it um, and, and go and see some more of James Morrison's paintings. And Katrina uh, did the fantastic animation during lockdown and, you know, <laughs> just so delighted she was able to do that. So thanks once again, BAFTA. I'm just so, so happy to be receiving this award. And uh, I just want to say, it was, as an animator, it was an absolute dream project. I really um, want to thank Anthony for bringing me on board to work in the style of such a wonderful artist as James Morrison. is something that many animators could never dream of. Um, so uh, that was just amazing. And this is actually the second time I've met Anthony, because the whole <laughs> thing was done during Corona. We were all <laughs> locked down. Um, and the one last thing I want to say is that, um, although this wasn't a Gaelic project, I, throughout my career as an animator, have been supported by uh, BBC Alipa and MG Alipa, and I really want to thank them because I think this is a prize for the Gales too. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Now we turn to the award for television scripted, which in recent years has gone to shows as distinctive and different as Guilt. The Replacement and Scott Squad. Presenting is an actress honoured by BAFTA Scotland for her breakthrough role starring in My Mad Fat Diary. Just this year, she's been part of a stellar cast in ITV's Finding Alice and she's soon to be seen alongside Benedict Cumberbatch and Claire Foy in the film The Electrical Life of Louis Wayne, which she is excellent in. Please welcome Sharon Rooney! <laughs> I can't believe you've seen it. I've not seen, seen it. it. You're fabulous it's in it. It's so nice to see you. You too. And all of you, obviously. <laughs> um, I'm really excited to be doing this. There's some tricky words in this VT and I'm dyslexic, so please bear with. Um, now, 
There's nothing timid about these challenging pieces of work. A bittersweet comedy about a family's vigil at the hospital bedside of their dad who lies helplessly in a coma. And two powerful dramas which give a voice to those confronting issues of identity and discrimination. <sighs> Let's take a look. <laughs> Television scripted. Adam. What do you think? It doesn't have to be a funny one. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. It can be anything at all. I know. It's just they all go out your head when you try to... What's most important is that you're talking to him. The joke doesn't matter. All right. Um, knock, knock. Not a knock, knock one. He can't do the other part. Sorry. Just a silly one. I'm going again. Cryptales. <laughs> And the Bath to Scotland Award goes to Adam. Thank you so much uh, to BAFTA, to all the jurors. Um, it's a lovely, lovely award to receive. Um, Adam, unfortunately, who is the star of the film and on which the story is based, sadly can't be with us tonight. So my first thank would go to Adam, who entrusted uh, myself and Francis and my co-director Louise Lockwood to handle his story and dramatise his story and he really was um, phenomenal in, in portraying his own story. Um, I first came across Adam when he was a, a kind of awkward teenager performing a, um, at the Citizens in a, in a community show and he just gave a, a little five minute um, monologue about his life um, growing up in Alexandria in Egypt and he found himself here in Glasgow as an asylum seeker. He, was, he grew up in a country where to be gay, to be trans, to, um, to just try and live as your authentic self could have you arrested. And that, that is the story that, that we have portrayed uh, in the film. Um, <laughs> so nervous. <laughs> Sorry, pull out a note, but I, I need it. Um, uh, I want to thank also the Virtual Trans Choir, which was made up of 150 trans and non-binary people around the world who sent in their videos and became part of a, a large, beautiful choir that sang as part of this film. It was dangerous for them to do that. Some had to pull out at the last minute. And I thank their, their bravery for, for showing their faces and saying, I can be here and you can too. Um, I want to thank just quickly Carolyn Sinclair Kidd at Hopscotch Films, who was so massively behind this project, the National Theatre of Scotland, BBC Scotland for believing in and supporting the film. And I'll just quickly run through the brilliant creatives that have uh, worked to collaborate on this. It's uh, been an incredible team. Louise Lockwood, as I, as I mentioned, Carlos Alessandro, our DOP, Bernie McGurk, Emily James, Lizzie Powell, uh, Gary Boyle, and the wonderful composer Jocelyn Pook. And of course, all the rest of the stunning cast who supported Adam in this film. Um, it was three years um, after the stage show that we made the film, so you might have, um, it would have been reasonable to expect that things had improved in that time for trans and uh, gender non-conforming people. Uh, to illustrate how far that is from the case, I thought it would be fitting to um, share an email that Adam sent us um, as we were just um, coming up to making the film. Um, so he said... Um, this film needs to be a slap on the face. Too many trans and gender non-conforming folk have been murdered in 2020 all over the world. Burned alive, tortured, raped, 
shot in the head, the list goes on. This is a pivotal stage in trans history where we take a step forward, then 10 back. My last visit to Egypt gave me a glimpse of the terrifying fear I used to feel daily. I don't feel it anymore because I'm lucky to be here, but I needed to remember this horrible feeling because I almost forgot what it is like for the rest of my community. There is a quote that I like, when one of us gets hurt, we all feel it because we know it could be one of us next. And today is um, Trans Day of Remembrance, so it seems fitting to end on uh, Adam's words. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations, don't forget your award. Right, we're heading behind the camera now to celebrate the year's Best Director in Factual Content. Presenting this award is an actress nominated for her role in the brilliant drama run. Uh, as if that's not enough, she's been busy in Amazon Prime's new take on the Alex Ryder spy stories and the pitch-perfect comedy film Our Ladies. Please welcome the rising star that is Marley Sue. <laughs> The nominees for Director Factual have brought us stories of class, death and drugs to our screens. Let's take a look. Director Factual Stephen Bennett, Darren McGarvey's Class Wars. But it's a very diverse mix of people who sit in the House of Parliament. It's not... What's well, not though, less and less working class people get into Parliament in the first place. You're wrong about that. But I understand why you think that, because people in your social class think all sorts of things that aren't right, mm. but they walk around and they speak a certain way and they dress a certain way, which suggests they're right, so everyone believes them. Matt Pinder, murder case. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here today with Amanda. And the reason we're here is because Amanda's got a prepared statement she wishes to read in respect to the incident concerning her brother, Paul Matheson, who was murdered coming up for nearly three weeks ago now. Go, go! Valley. Valley. Phoenix is a go. Phoenix is a go. When we had him in position, we said, let's go for it. David Whitney, killing Escobar. They were all there, got their kit, boom, 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 check mine, I'm out. Okay, good. Helicopters, helicopters. And the BAFTA Scotland Award goes to David Whitney Killing Escobar. Thank you, BAFTA Scotland. It's great honour. Um, I've been trying to make this film for about uh, 16 years. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so you can imagine how I, how I feel today. Um, Nick Torsic and Paul Van Carter at Salon Pictures, um, you were the first people to believe in me and see the value in the project and to, and to back it. And I'll always be grateful, so thank, thank you guys. Um, Alan Clements and Mick McAvoy here tonight uh, and all the team here at Two Rivers. Um, it's been a, a brilliant experience working with you guys and um, on a personal and a professional level. Um, it's been really superb, so thank you so much for your, for your support. Um, I'd like to thank um, BBC Scotland, Tony Nellany, uh, Screen Scotland, Mark Thomas, um, Abacus Media, my DP, Julian Schwanitz, uh, Bernie McGurk, he's had quite a few mentions tonight. Brilliant editor here in Glasgow. Um, all the cast and crew um, here and in uh, Columbia. Um, and a huge thanks to Peter McAleese and Dave Tompkins. Um, Peter, you, um, you had the faith. Uh, you, gave, you gave a lot. You put your trust in me, and I'll always, uh, always be grateful to you for that. Uh, just wrapping up now, I'd like to thank my parents for, my support, for, for their support. 
I wouldn't be here. Well, obviously, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them, but um, I really wouldn't. Is, is this it? Is this it? This, yeah, that's heavy. Uh, no, Mum and Dad, thank you so much. And, of course, uh, my family, Natalie, Callum and Alfie, for all your love and support through a very difficult time during lockdown. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well done, David. Award for Best Work of the Year in Features, the kind of unscripted formats which are a key part of the television schedule and build a real relationship with audiences. Announcing the winner is an actress who's not only been breaking our hearts again in Endeavour on ITV, but adding to the compelling story of the deliciously twisted guilt for the BBC. Please welcome Sarah Vickers. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's great to be here. Uh, these shows all represent television that is warm, informative, entertaining and have become a pleasure to watch for millions of people up and down the country, myself included in that. So uh, how have they done it? Let's take a look. Features, sponsored by Edit123. Something else in here to highlight. Antiques Road Trip. Pair of spittoons. It's just a bit disgusting. People used to go to spit, I suppose because they were smoking raw tobacco and it was just a bit gross, wasn't it? So they used to kind of spit into the... Can you imagine that being your job, having to empty a spittoon? I think we'll put those back from whence they came. Escape to the farm with Kate Humble. There we go. <laughs> that was the big, not me. <laughs> big... Oh, hang on, what's that? That feels like a little leg. Oh. Just as I feared, the second piglet is stuck in the birth canal. Don't let go. I'm trying not to, but it's not really wanting to come out. Oh, damn it. I don't know. Location, location, location. Perhaps. Are I don't the only know. two on the street? I know, well, probably, because it's the best house on the street. Do you have bollards outside yours? No, I don't. Do I you don't. have sentries? Ha, ha, ha. I, I know what you're trying to say, Phil. I know. You're I... always making Queenie references. Well, look at you now, wrapped in your I know, scarf. I'm just trying to keep my hair dry. Hey. Hello. Welcome to Windsor. <laughs> and the BAFTA Scotland Award goes to Antiques Road Trip. Wow, I, I'm really, really quite surprised, actually. I was some stiff competition there. So thank you very much to BAFTA. Um, thank you to the jurors. Um, it's a real honour to be accepting an award for a show that's been running for so, so long. To accept an award for a show that's in its 24th series is, is a real, real privilege. So I'd like to say thank you on behalf of every, every, everyone at STV Studios. Um, uh, I'd like to thank our commissioner, Muslim Alim, Craig Hunter, John Redshaw, our exec, Isabel Oram, our long-serving production manager who's kept the show on the road for the last 10 years. Uh, it's not an easy programme to make at the best of times, but in COVID, obviously, as we all know, TV has become incredibly tricky. Uh, trying to socially distance people in a tiny classic car, as Edith knows, is very, very difficult. Um, but yeah, no, thank you very much. I think, um, in particular, I'd like to thank the production team. They had a really, really hard time of it on this series in particular. Um, I'd also like to thank our edits. I mean, there's too many people to mention, but in particular, Mark Duncan, who was involved in that particular programme. Um, yeah, it's a real honour. It's a show that I have a lot of uh, love for, and I'm really, really privileged. I feel privileged to have uh, stewarded it for a short period. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Yep, I'm, uh, I think my episode's coming up in December with Mark Wadcliffe. Had a great time. So much fun. Now, for one reason or another, it's been quite a year since this time last year. So much has happened in the past 12 months. So if I can take you back to November the 12th, 2020, when a certain football match might have raised hopes and dreams to possibly the most recent 
monumental event to put Scotland in the spotlight. Of course, Iron Brew taking COP26 by storm right here in Glasgow. But in that whole time, there has been so much great work by Scots and made in Scotland. Like this kind of thing. Give a little something to this country and uh, a whole bed run back home. It's on our party tonight because we deserve it. You know, we've been through so many years. We know it, you know it, everyone knows it. And uh, it's a monkey off the back now, and uh, we're just going to move on from here. are back here to face England as football's oldest rivalry is about to be renewed. It's ah. tears of joy. We're entering McScotland. <clears throat> I'm not sure we're blending in terribly well. It could be worse. <laughs> So sort of, I quite like being inside the bubble that is the Olympics. So well done for getting DI. Thanks. You ready? A veil shift t-shirt. Exams are going to mean nothing if we don't have a planet to have careers on. Hello and welcome to Transmit. They might just think, who are the old bastards up on <laughs> <in> stage? <laughs> who is this absolute dream in oyster grey silk? We have so many winners of the Turner Prize living in Glasgow. Away and boil your head. Uh, that's go and boil your head. 72 hours ago, my body was discovered. I feel like a bad person. I don't even know why I did it. You know, Fraser's going to stay in that jail cell until I get some answers. A two-week-long celebration of business as usual and blah, blah, blah. They don't have any margin for error. Nobody presents as the monster that they are. And they only become apparent when we find out what they're hiding. I love a montage. I love hey, how good was that? <laughs> Life complete. I made an intro montage. Oh! Um, a year later, the dream is still alive again. We never give up. Come on, Scotland! Um, they are. I mean, our landscapes, cities, crews, carpenters, designers, writers, production companies. Presenters, producers, directors, actors, sportsmen and women, all made in Scotland. A massive thank you to all who supplied the material. Right, our next award takes us into a world where so many filmmakers get the chance to show their potential, creativity and talent. Short film and animation. Presenting is a star of Outlander and one of this year's biggest TV dramas, Vigil. Soon to be seen headlining the Val McDermott inspired ITV detective drama, Karen Piri. From the people who brought us Bodyguard and Line of Duty, please welcome the hugely talented Lauren Lyle. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, uh, guys, personally, I am delighted to be here, uh, honoured for the biggest night of the year, the biggest event of the year in Glasgow, COP20. 
<laughs> Battle Scotland Awards. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Black. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, the nominees this evening demonstrate talent, ambition, classic storytelling and uh, skills and real contemporary urgency. Three remarkable pieces of work. Let's take a look. Short film and animation. Expensive shit. Harmonic spectrum. To me, there's not much difference between sitting playing on my own and playing in front of people. You can have a crowd of like 100,000 to four. There's not any difference. There's a big wall between the stage and the people outside of it. I want to be out of the bubble. The bubble is a pain. The bubble is the curse. Neville is dead. Go and stand in the middle of the road. Why? You'll see. Okay. How was it? <laughs> wow. It's hectic. And <laughs> uh, the BAFTA Scotland Award goes to Harmonic Spectrum. Just to make it easier, when we didn't get this award, we didn't plan anything to say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think we're, yeah, thanks very much, BAFTA. Thank you to all the jurors for, for voting for the film. I think we'd probably like to say thanks to Sean, who's the, the, the sort of protagonist of the film, for, for allowing us to tell his story. Um, and to the Scottish Documentary Institute, we were part of the Bridging the Gap short film competition. So one of four films that were commissioned last year. And it was a yeah, challenging time to make a film during the pandemic. And uh, luckily, we were granted an extension to our deadline, so it allowed us to kind of follow Sean's story. Um, and I think the film that we've ended up with, um, we're really proud of. Yeah, um, it's, it's really great that a documentary has won the Short Film Award. Um, it was aimed to shine light on people who are neurodivergent and them overcoming adversity. And basically, when you create environments for them to thrive, they really do. But they can't be put into boxes and all those environments need to be specific to that person. And I think this film really represents that. And um, Sean and Anthony, the protagonists of this documentary, have gone on to do some pretty amazing things after this. And their band is called The Ugly Royals. I'd be in trouble if I didn't mention that with <laughs> Sean. Um, and they're planning a lot of uh, kind of socially diverse and inclusive performances. And big thanks to the Pianodrome oh, as yeah. well. Yeah. Nice one. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Now it's time for the award for Best Factual Series. To present it, a star of one of the most important and unnecessary drama series of the, the past year, in fact, any year. After Scotland Audience Award nominee two from the brilliant It's a Sin, please welcome the brilliant David Carlyle. <laughs> Oh, that dress. Thanks. And my champagne bottle. Yeah. <laughs> this the bubbles. I know this is really basic uh, for BAFTA, but I'm going to take a selfie because this might never happen again. Oh, yes, do it. So, Can I come in it? Why has no one thought about it? <laughs> Smile, everyone. <laughs> Yay! Yes. <laughs> so these programmes take us back in time and around the world, show us some treasures on our doorstep, and plot a path through a disturbing criminal investigation. Let's take a look. Factual series. Extraordinary escapes with Sandy Toxvig. When you sit here and it's just you in nature, 
that will do. That will do. That will do. And you think, I can forgive all the people that I otherwise think I couldn't forgive. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, it makes your heart feel bigger. That's what it is. You sort of just widen out. You think, it's okay. Mm. We've been lucky today. So lucky. All through my travels, I kept... Michael Palin, travels of a lifetime. It's really, really important to keep a record. I mean, every day is precious. You're seeing things you'll probably never, ever see again in your life. Now, for the first time, I'm looking back, revisiting my most memorable journeys and opening my diaries to find forgotten moments from my travels. Murder case. Uh, a new deployment's come in overnight, however, we're going to tell a wee bit behind with this inquiry because it's already a week old. The deceased Paul Matheson passed away in the early hours of this morning, having been in an induced coma for the past week. Clearly, it's a, uh, an act of uh, extreme violence, a sustained attack. <laughs> and the BAFTA Scotland Award goes to... Murder case. Uh, thank you very much, Bath to Scotland and uh, jury members. Uh, as people have said, uh, making these films is complicated at the best of times, but uh, throw in a global pandemic and uh, it, it very nearly didn't happen at all and the only reason it did happen is because some exceptional people uh, both on screen and uh, behind camera um, so I need to thank the Police Scotland major investigation team who they, for their sort of continuous uh, incredible support and uh, make, making these films uh, the, the families of the victims, and in particular um, Amanda Rigby, uh, who was just so incredibly brave and uh, courageous, and, and sort of what can only yeah, be described as the, the worst time for, for her and her family when, when her uh, brother was, was murdered. Um, and then uh, the, the, our team, uh, Firecrest Films, uh, guys up on stage. Audrey, uh, Paul, Ian, Sky, uh, Nicole, and everyone at Firecrest Films. Uh, I'm forgetting lots of other people, but um, thank you so much. Okay, we've come to the award honouring the year's most exceptional programme in news and current affairs. Presenting is an actor whose work always makes headlines. He's been honoured by BAFTA Scotland himself, and just this year, he's had us gripped in both guilt and Shetland. With more to come in much anticipated thriller, The Rig, it is a real pleasure to introduce the wonderful Mark Bonner. Hello, friends. Hello, BAFTA Scotland. Um, it's a huge honour to be here tonight um, in my living room. <laughs> in the morning. Um, I hope you're all safe and well and I hope the next year we get a chance to at least see each other in the flesh again. Wouldn't that be special? Um, I'm honoured to be here to present the award for uh, News and Current Affairs. Uh, the following nominations include um, a programme that shows the reality of life for millions of women. Uh, one that showcased a medical marvel and another that presented us all with a very exciting legal and political drama. Let's take a wee peek at the noms. News and current affairs. And it did cross my mind. I thought, well, Aren't hot flushes and things like that and sweats? Isn't that the menopause? But I thought, I'm too young, I'm 44, I can't be going through the menopause. That happens to women in their 50s. Davina McCall, Sex, Myths and the Menopause. And then I got in touch with some real shame around it. And I felt 
Embarrassed. Jabbed inside Britain's vaccine trial. We need a vaccine. We're going to need a special group to move at extraordinary speed, and they're going to have to take some real risks. It was obviously going to be difficult to know whether a vaccine was possible. What we would need was people with really deep technical understanding of this. You can talk endlessly about what you think is the right way to do it. We needed to do something, and I just did it. The trial of Alex Salmond. In March this year, former First Minister of Scotland, Alex Salmond, left the High Court in Edinburgh, cleared of all charges of sexual misconduct. The verdict concluded one of the most dramatic trials Britain has ever seen, and a tale of political intrigue and alleged crimes that has gripped me since the story first hit the headlines. And the BAFTA Scotland Award goes to... Jabbed inside Britain's vaccine triumph. Congratulations. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. The film was an incredibly fast turnaround. They're also my first film in current affairs, and to have this recognition is really lovely. Thank you very much. And I should thank uh, Louisa Compton and Sarah Hay at Channel 4 for backing the project, um, the amazing production team uh, at Windfall Films that made it all happen, and probably most of all the the scientists and the members of that vaccine task force that took a risk in talking to us when they did and told us in detail what happened and most of all personally what it was like for them in that incredible year and bringing us those life-saving vaccines was an incredible, a phenomenal effort. And yeah, I guess in the, in the shadow of COP, I, I hope if the, the film shows anything, it's that if we do let the experts take the lead. You know, we can make big changes very quickly. So uh, anyway, thanks for this. Cheers. Thank you. Part two of the BAFTA Scotland Audience Award, and back to fill in the blanks, it's Sanjeev Kohli. <laughs> now, the great thing about BAFTA is that we're actually really proud that BAFTA Scotland 2021 is an Albert Sustainable production, which means that behind the scenes, our production team have made huge efforts to lower the carbon footprint of this show. And you already mentioned that you're eco-dressed. Yes. But, um, COP26, were you, did, what did you make of it? Were you... Well, I know that the, the 12, 12 of the big broadcasters, like streamers and like BBC ITV, Channel 4, um, all signed an agreement. And the idea is basically that they are going, they've made a pledge to um, make, tell good climate stories and more climate stories, and not just in their news output, but across the board, be it soap, be it drama, be whatever. Um, so uh, that's good. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, already I think that the soaps have already combined to do a, a combined storyline about uh, climate change. And also, they don't want to paint a, a bleak, dystopian future. They want, they want it to be a sustainable future. So at least that's a good thing. Yeah. You want to tell us about our next two yes. contenders? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, time for the second pair. As you say, it was shortlisted contenders for the Audience Award. Very different to what they do, but equally brilliant at doing it. Now, Jean Johansson is a face that you will all know. Television presenting is not an easy discipline, as I'm currently proving in real time right now. <laughs> but Jean has managed to bring her huge amount of charisma and personality to all kinds of shows, from A Place in the Sun to regular stints on The One Show and even Celebrity MasterChef, establishing her as a proper bona fide daytime star. Not only that, she's helped to put Port Glasgow on the map, which for some reason hadn't been on a map. <laughs> Used to drive the sat-navs mental. Gary Lamont, seen recently just in there in the epic drama The North Water, will be singing Jean's praises later. But before that is Martin Compton. Now, Martin has been everywhere the last couple of years. In fact, he's been so ubiquitous that God is thinking about switching to his agent. <laughs> and the reason he's been everywhere is that he's just so damned good, despite never having been to drama school. Pure natural talent. 
The show he's been nominated for is a, one of his little-known cult police dramas, a thing called Line of Duty. <laughs> and as one of the few people that's actually watched the show, I can tell you, this performance is utterly electrifying. And not only that, but his iconic look has single-handedly rescued the waistcoat from the snooker referees. <laughs> Here to carry his metaphorical golf clubs is the caddy himself, that's right, Doc Cotton, from Line of Duty, the wonderful Craig Parkinson. Here he is. Audience Award in partnership with Screen Scotland. Take the work seriously, but try not to take yourself too seriously. When I hear this wise and judicious advice, it brings to mind various actors I've been fortunate enough to work alongside. From chippy, troubled teenager to strong but brittle leading man, Martin Compton is one of those actors. An inspiration to many, over the years, Martin has proved that you don't have to follow the formal, not to mention costly, path of a drama school education to forge a career. As his star was on the rise, there was always one thing that Martin never forgot, and that's his roots. It's these roots, as well as his strong work ethic, his willingness to take risks, and a lack of vanity in front of the camera, at least, are just some of the starting points that make Martin Comston my favourite Scott on screen. Martin Comston, Line of Duty. Hiya, this is a message for Jean Johansson. She's no paid her Minaj turn this week. No, that's not what this is. What's this one? The BAFTA Scotland Audience Award for Favourite Scott on Screen. Jean is nominated for A Place in the Sun. And I'm sure I can speak for all of her close friends, loved ones, family, and say that we're utterly delighted, thrilled, and so proud that she has been included in this year's list of nominees. A Place in the Sun. Does she get paid to travel throughout Europe and the rest of the world? Yes. Does she get paid to root about other people's houses for our viewing pleasure? Also yes. Does she screen my calls and pretend it's the jet lag? The jury is still out in it, but we'll know hey for the night. We're delighted, we're thrilled. Jean is our favourite Scot because she is hardworking. She is professional. She flies the flag for Scotland wherever she goes and good luck to all the nominees tonight but our money's on Jean. We love you Jean. What's the highest you're willing to go? Highest and final offer is 128,000. Okay. Jean Johansson, A Place in the Sun. Jean again, I have a last and final offer for you. It is £128,000. I'm going to pass that on to them, Chris. Appreciate it. Guys, you got yourself a property in Texas! Oh, God. Oh, brilliant. Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. Sanjeev will be back later for the final part when the winner is revealed. Next up, Best Actress Television, a category whose recent winners include Kelly MacDonald, Elaine C. Smith, Laura Fraser, Katrina Balfe. That is some lineup. To tell us who's about to join the list, a young actor whose role in the Netflix sensation Sex Education has brought him a sackful of awards, including one last year from BAFTA Scotland, and rightly so. Please put your hands together and welcome Chiti Gatwa. Hello, hello, hello. Absolute pleasure to see you, Edith. Me pleasure too. to be here. Uh, there has been some brilliant work by women in television drama this year, and these are BAFTA Scotland's pick of the bunch. Portraying a fiercely independent daughter of a family bent on revenge, AC12's most enigmatic adversary, and a bereaved sister who tries hard to keep things light, but has a habit of putting her foot in it. Here they are in action. Actress, television. Abigail Laurie, Tin Star, Liverpool.
Kelly MacDonald, line of duty. That I'm not bent. Yes, but you hid this evidence for months. Not months. No. That's not what happened. I only began to suspect the evidence might be there after Terry Boyle's arrest. The print shop had been long abandoned by the OCG. Police searches concluded there 18 months ago, and it was right across the street. But you never ordered a search of the print shop. Sharon Rooney. It should have been me. Finding Alice. Not her. What? Oh. I think that. So I know you must. Nicola, stop it. The only consolation from him dying was that I get more love and attention. That's so, all. But now there's George and Sperm Baby, and I'm glad, but. Oh, fuck. And the BAFTA Scotland Award goes to Abigail Laurie, Tin Star. That's so nice. Thank you so much, um, BAFTA Scotland. Oh, uh, I'm shocked. Um, I want to thank everyone who's involved in Tin Star. Uh, it was a show that we made over five years and it was a really formative time in my life. So I'm so grateful for it. All our crew, all our cast in Canada and at home and Alison and Jen and Tim and Angus who's here and Andy and uh, Rowan um, and everyone at Sky. Thank you so much. And I'd like to thank um, my secondary school drama teacher, Mr. Parker, because without him, I wouldn't be doing this um, without his kindness. And thank you for introducing me to Donna, um, who's here. Um, thank you for always backing me and being the best. And yeah, thank you to mum and dad and Ellis and Harry, my brothers, for just always being lovely and encouraging me. And yeah, this is so nice. Thank you. Congratulations. Bye, Tutti. Thank you. Oh, lovely. Right, our next category takes us to the uh, starting point of any great drama. The script presenting the award for writer, film or television is an actor who's added to an already impressive list of credits with the period drama Ammonite and the hit TV series Mayor of Easttown. He is a busy man. Currently on stage in London opposite Sir Ronan in a sold out production of The Scottish Play, which I actually saw last week. This man is going to win every theatre award for his performance. Please let me introduce the wonderful James McArdle. Good evening, Bath of Scotland, and to my heart, my love, and our national treasure, Edith Bowman. Um, I can't be there tonight because I'm currently playing Macbeth in London, written by one of the greatest writers that ever lived, so I think that's why they thought it appropriate that I announced the winner for uh, Best Writer in the Film or Television category. Uh, let's take a look at the nominees. Writer, Film, Television in partnership with Screen Scotland. What did you do in the bath? Lucy Bryden, Body of Water. Well, aside from the obvious, um, showered with supervision, ate with supervision, um, weigh-ins. It's just replacing one set of rules with another. Eva Riley. Perfect ten. Hey, you're dancing? No. Why not? Because you look like a prick. That's Fuck why I'm off, from. Fuck off. I ain't dancing with you. She's the dancer. Come on, show us how you flip over on that. I ain't doing it here. Can't do no backflips. Well, I can. Can you show me now? I'll just say that I ain't doing what, it here. Just show me now and show everyone else. I'll probably leave her alone. She's got a fuck off face looking like <laughs> She's boring, mate. No, I'm not scared of. I just. Did I you steal that chicken for her? <laughs> ben Sharrock, Limbo. You have to give it back. They haven't any money, chicken. They're not noticed one chicken. If they missing. notice, the first place they're going to look is with the migrants with no money or morals. We have morals, okay? I know. I'm saying that's what they think. But had you have to put the chicken back. 
and the BAFTA Scotland award goes to Ben Sharrick for Limbo. Thank you, BAFTA Scotland and the jury for this incredible recognition. Um, I'm so sorry that I can't be there in person tonight. Uh, it's recognition like this that gives our film and its subject matter the visibility it needs, so thank you. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the incredible team behind this film, so thank you to everyone who took this journey with us. Um, thank you to our partners, movie protagonist, Film 4, the BFI, Screen Scotland, for nurturing and funding our film. Um, thank you to our incredible cast, to Amir El Masri, um, who so elegantly carries this film and his on-screen partner in crime, Vikash Bai, both of whom are so deservedly nominated tonight as well. Um, thank you to Angus Lamont, who we're so grateful to for taking this journey with us. And uh, finally, a massive thank you to Rune Gortubai. Um, I wouldn't be here without you, um, my wife, uh, my producer, and now, and the reason that I'm not there tonight, um, the mother of my child. Um, thank you for your quiet and unassuming brilliance. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, enjoy your night. Fantastic. Congratulations, Ben, on all of that and the new edition as well. Uh, now to the award for actor television, one which has been taken home in recent times by the likes of Douglas Henshaw, Ken Stott and David Tennant. To reveal the winner, it gives me immense joy to have this contribution from a genuine legend, a double Oscar winner, one of the very greatest actresses of her generation, or any generation for that matter, and last year named Best Actress on Television by BAFTA Scotland uh, for the incredible Elizabeth is Missing. Please welcome Glenda Jackson. Hello, Edith. Hello, BAFTA Scotland. I'm really sorry I can't be with you in Glasgow. Great city, well, great country, great people. The three nominees are huge names in Scotland's acting world and the stories they tell range from historic racism, the trials and tribulations of lockdown and one man's escalating battle with the birds in his back garden. Actor, television, Jack Loden, um, Small Axe. On behalf of my client and the rest of the defendants sat rather uncomfortably in the dock today, I am making an application for an all-black jury to be appointed. The decision to grant this application would be hailed throughout the world as a great victory for liberty. And why on God's earth would I agree to that? Well, an all-black jury is required in this case, Your Lordship, because they are the only persons who qualify in the conditions of our modern society as equals of the defendant. She's got to be there at 8.45. James McAvoy, together. She just says it like that, you know, just cold as ice. But inside, I can see our hearts just, like, gone. You know, like that. Like that. The other morning, I looked out onto the garden, and there, on the decking, were about 25 jackdaws. Peter Mullen, fat boys. Just staring at me. Like that. I opened the door. They didn't move. They just stood there, staring at me. Like that. The BAFTA Scotland Award goes to James McAvoy. Hello there. Uh, I'm really sorry that I can't be here tonight. Uh, it is nonetheless a massive honour to win this award. I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank you, say thank you to Dennis E. Kelly, uh, Stephen Daldry, and uh, for Sharon Horgan's amazing acting. Um, he's made an amazing piece of work about a terrible piece of time um, that I. Uh, everybody, have a good time tonight. Eat up, drink up, and please, please, please be merry. All the best. Bye bye. Lovely. All the best 
to you, James, too. Now, the first of our returning awards after a break is for Outstanding Actor in a Film. Presenting the award is an actress making a name all over the world in shows like Legends of Tomorrow and Warrior. She's now appearing in Irvin Welsh's new Britbox drama, Crime. Fantastic stuff. Shot right here in her native Scotland. It's the amazing Joanna Vanderham. Good evening, everyone. Yes, I have been working abroad, but I've spent at least nine months filming in Glasgow this year, and it is an honour to be here this evening. All first-time nominees in films which have already made an impact at festivals all over the world. One character has a fondness for Freddie Mercury, another is burdened by the guilt of leaving his family behind, and a third seeking a way out of a confined and drab existence. I'm sure we can all relate to that. Here they are at work. Actor. Film. You see that chicken over there? Vikash Bai. Limbo. He knew to grow. <laughs> he very special. I like him very much. You think he like me too? Amir El Mazri. Sure. Limbo. My body. You can buy the Shikam Shahar or Akhtar. Mark Stanley. Run. I got the pace. Real shame. Hey, you want to us tonight? Real shame. You want it for heaters tonight? You can do. Right. Maybe your mum and me will have some wine tonight. Fuck's sake. Congratulations to all the nominees. The winner of this year's BAFTA Scotland Actor in Film goes to... Amir El Masri. Now, unfortunately, uh, Amir can't be with us tonight to accept his award, but he has sent us this message. BAFTA, thank you so, so much for this incredible award. I'm deeply honoured and humbled by this and equally gutted. I can't be there with you all tonight to celebrate as I'm away filming in Egypt, but uh, I'm with you there in spirit. I want to start off by thanking my family, my mum, my dad, my brothers at home, Mohammed, I love you all so much. I want to thank all the amazing Scottish cast and crew who worked tirelessly behind the scenes and in front of the camera on the Uists. Uh, man, we worked on some crazy, crazy conditions, but uh, yeah, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. I want to thank uh, everybody at Film 4, BFI, uh, Creative Scotland, Mubi, Focus Features. I want to thank my agents, Oli Aziz, Lizzie Price, everyone at UTA, Insight, Premier PR. I want to thank everybody at the Syrian Working Men's Group. And last but not least, the amazing auteur, Ben Sharrick. Thank you for your leadership, your friendship, and for allowing me to be on this journey with you. Thank you all so much, and have a wonderful night. Take care. Brilliant. And now feels like the best time, really, to complete the shortlist for the BAFTA Scotland Audience Awards. So back to fill in the last two vacancies, Sanjeev Kohli. <laughs> there you go, two wins so far. Amazing as well. I also haven't sat down all night. <laughs> Up and down like a horse draws. Right, shall we do the last two? Shall we? Yes, OK, right. We have reached the final two names on the shortlist for your favourite Scott on screen, and the names you have voted for could hardly be more impressive. David Tennant is a young Paisley boy, still finding his feet in the business. I'm joking, obviously, that man has provided more iconic performances than I have fingers and toes. But the one he's being considered for tonight is his utterly terrifying, note-perfect performance as Dennis Nielsen in Des. Is he going to clear some space on his mantelpiece for yet another award, Edith? Does he even have a mantelpiece, Edith? I don't know. I don't really know him. I do think he's smashing, though, as does Michael Sheen, no less, who'll be bigging his Good Omens co-star right up. Before that, though, 
Kelly McDonald has been wowing us for years for the sheer diversity of her amazing work from train spotting to No Country for Old Men to Boardwalk Empire to Giri Haji and much, 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 much more. Put three more muches in there. But tonight she's nominated for a standout performance in Series 6 of Line of Duty. No one in the history of cinema or television has ever extracted so much goodness from the two words, no comment. <laughs> one of the most memorable bits of acting I think I've ever seen. Here to state her case is one of the show's directors, Gareth Brynn. Audience Award in partnership with Screen Scotland. I had the great pleasure of um, directing uh, Kelly in this year's series of Line of Duty, and I've got to say she is... She is one of the nicest, uh, most approachable, down-to-earth people that I've had the pleasure of working with. And I think, I think that's why uh, it's so easy to connect with her when you see her on screen. She's... Oh, sorry. Marty Thompson. She may be nice, approachable and down-to-earth, but can she shoot a sniper with one shot from a distance of 50 metres with a pistol? No, probably not. No, I think, I think you win that one, Martin. Anyway, uh, but that's what's so lovely about her on screen is because she... Sorry. Martin again. Just remember who the original series regulars are. Series 7 might be on the cards. This again. It's my pleasure to recommend Martin Comston as this year's favourite Scott on screen. Kelly MacDonald, Lane of Duty. I think probably the only thing more enjoyable than working with David is actually getting to watch him perform on screen. Uh, in fact, one of the difficulties of working with David is that um, you get a bit lost sometimes in just admiring what he's doing and enjoying his performance so much. Um, but I think uh, this year in particular, watching him uh, perform in Des was uh, extraordinary. I mean, I thought I knew how brilliant he was um, but I think he sort of pushed uh, the envelope further this year with that performance. I've never seen someone be able to um, portray absence uh, as well as he did in that performance. It was chilling because of what was missing. Um, and it was just an extraordinary performance. And I think him at the height of what he's able to do, the confidence to be able to um, just remove so much uh, from a character and still know that it's going to be compelling and it really was it's it was not only one of the performances of the year but i think one of the the great performances of of the last you know decade um so uh he is certainly my favorite scott on screen he's probably uh my favorite british actor on screen and it is a, an honor to be able to to know him and to work with him david tennant days Talking about one body or two. Fifteen or sixteen, I think. having all these lovely kind of accompaniments of, of people who've worked with them, you know, kind of fans of, of all our, our nominees tonight. Right, have you got the envelope on you? The time is now. I do. Um, well, I mean, we really hope Michael Sheen's hair is like that for a part and she, he hasn't had to become an 80s Edinburgh casual. <laughs> yeah. That'd be scary. OK, so you have voted. Uh, we have listened. We've counted. We've had that count verified. 
And I can tell you that the BAFTA Scotland Audience Award for your favourite Scotland stream goes to... For RuPaul's Drag Race UK, Lawrence Cheney! My God, I cannot believe I am winning this award tonight. It's so surreal. You know, I'm nominated against people I've looked up to for so long, and it, it truly means the world to me. I mean, I, I you know, look kind of like Big Bird right now, so I appreciate all of the support, all the fans out there. Thank you so much to everyone for believing in me. Thank you to anyone that hated on me in school, because now <laughs> I have the confidence to... Uh, do this as a full-time job and entertain people all around the world. And uh, I need to thank uh, my mum, my parents, family. Uh, I need to thank uh, BBC Three, uh, World of Wonder. I need to thank uh, Randy, Fenton, uh, Matt, Bruce, Ruby, Erin, and of course, RuPaul Charles for changing my life. <laughs> And, you, you know, what's really funny is before when I used to do gigs, people didn't know how to pronounce my name. <laughs> people would say, yeah, that's Chorence Laney or, you know, Larry Chancey. <laughs> and then all because RuPaul said, Lawrence Cheney. My life has changed so much. I now have people in Tesco's and supermarkets shouting my name at me. It's very inconvenient, but <laughs> thank you so much, everyone, for voting. Thank you so much, everyone, for supporting me, and I'll see you soon. <laughs> yes! Well, Fantastic stuff. Now, a little earlier, we re I reminded you of some of the breathtaking work from the past year. But that was then, this is now, and this is the future. There's a restaurant at the bottom of Coldwater Canyon. Marlon Brando has his dinner in there on a Thursday. Because he likes it because nobody bothers him and he sleeps after his dinner. Hangs over Glasgow, the Bible John story. This was somebody patrolling dance halls, picking up victims at random. Nobody wants to be a prosecution witness against their dad. You lied in court. The only thing that I care about is getting justice for my mum. Getting justice for your mum isn't putting my dad away if he didn't do it. So what do I do? Nothing, Sarah. You do nothing. This is OIM of Kinloch Bravo. Emergency rescue required. We're fossils digging fossils. All we have to do is wait and trust. You say that like it's easy. They rush through the water at 100 miles an hour, dragging chunks of seabed bigger than a tanker with them. Marcus, we'll be done! Owen, he'll come back. Push it, Owen. Shut it down. We're Finish. done, Hutton. NRB. Finished. We're all finished, mate. This is the opener of one of his poems called Christabel. It is the middle of the night by the castle clock and the owls have awakened the crowing cock. And it goes on and it gets so creepy, the poet Shelley ran from the room screaming because he got so freaked out by this poem. I'm not going out much then next year. Now, we honour this year's finest work by a director of fiction and to present a very busy 
former BAFTA breakthrough and BAFTA winning actor who's been shooting the huge Neil Gaiman penned Amazon series as you just saw there Anansi Boys uh, and just down the road in Edinburgh. Please welcome the hugely talented Malachi Kirby. <laughs> So I've been, um, those words were too much for me, um, but thank you. <laughs> um, so, the impact of an innocent casualty of the war and terror. A young gymnast making a life-changing discovery and refugees coming to terms with life while forced to take culture classes. In their different ways, each of these directors has done truly remarkable work. And here's some evidence to prove it. Director, fiction. Sponsored by Champagne Tattinger. Kevin MacDonald, the Mauritanian. You, you, you asked me to set fire to this place, but I'm still sick. Write it down. Right, that's what the pages are for. Write it down. You need to tell me the truth. You need to tell me what happened to you. I can't defend you. Do you I understand that? I don't need that? to tell you nothing. Whatever I say, it doesn't matter. This fucking island, I died here. Eva Riley, Perfect Ten. Will it back? Will it back? DJ, make it clap. Will it back? Will it back? DJ. I can feel it in my body. I can feel it in my veins. When the DJ wills it back, I'm finna go insane. I can feel it in my body. I can feel it in my veins. When the DJ wills it back, I'm finna go insane. I'm in the club. Ben Sharrick, Limbo. Yes. I don't know. Eh? You? Not this morning. See? Um. So, the BAFTA Scotland Award goes to Ben Sharrock, Limbo. Now, as we already know, Ben has a very good reason why he's not here this evening, but he did send us this message. It's me again. Uh, this is incredible. Um, thank you so much um, again to BAFTA Scotland and uh, the jury. Um, I won't go through that list again, um, but I will say thank you again to everyone who took this journey with us. Um, you know who you are, uh, and uh, we would, you know, I wouldn't be here without you. Um, this is for the refugees, for the asylum seekers, and for the outsiders. Um, we can always do better. Thank you. Well done, Ben, of Team Limbo. Now, uh, and another award which returns after break is for feature film. To present this award, we have a giant of stage and screen. Cinema's original Hannibal Lecter, who this year collected a Golden Globe for playing another monster, heading up the backstabbing family from hell in the masterly succession. It is the one and only Brian Cox. Hello, BAFTA Scotland. These extraordinary films include stories of a frustrated young father and racer who takes off for one last night at the wheel. A documentary charting the life and impact of a groundbreaking music star. And the wry and poignant observation of the refugee experience on a remote Scottish island. Let's take a look. Feature film. Limbo. What instrument is that anyway? Oh, it's like a guitar. Ah, uh -huh. and you brought that all the way from Syria. Oh, well, once you get your cast up, we should organize a concert. That's a wonderful idea. Syrian music here on the island. And we could have a finger buffet at the interval. But jelly pieces and uh, mm. hummus. Mm. Baba Ganesh. Baba Ham. On behalf of my client, I think this is a very good idea. Polystyrene, I am a cliché. 
obviously identity meant something to her because of the song. It was not only, I feel, talking about women within rock music, it was also talking about how many black women did you see on the front covers of fashion magazines. Run. And the BAFTA Scotland Award goes to Limbo. An award from Logan Roy, I'm, I'm slightly frightened. Um, I'd like to say congratulations to the other nominees first. Well done. Um, glad to accept the award on behalf of Ben and the Rooney. Um, say thanks again to uh, Mubi, who released the film in the UK. Film 4, Screen Scotland, the BFI, who financed it. The most important people, obviously. And uh, fantastic Scottish crew put together by Wendy Griffin, who's here tonight. And uh, all the people in North and South US, Bernary, Ben Becula, and Grimsey, who helped us so much to get the film made. So, um, I'd just also like to say that it's really good to see the recognition given to Ben and Aruni tonight, who are young filmmakers uh, coming back to Scotland after a while away to try and set up their careers here. And, be part of the film culture here and enrich in, in, in it, hopefully, hopefully for, for the years to come. So um, it's, uh, it's really heartening to see that as part of what's happening in the, in the, generally in Scotland and in industry. It's all looking pretty positive, I think, as you can see from all the shows we've been, and films we've been watching tonight. Um, congratulations to Abigail as well, partner in crime from Liverpool. Um, well deserved um, and just selfishly for myself I'd like to say thanks very much to my wife Carol um, if it wasn't for her I wouldn't have got this so thanks again now then the final returning award which honours the finest work by an actress on film to present an actor whose work on film and television extends, I mean, battling Tom Cruise and Liam Neeson to romance and Drew Barrymore. He's played Moses and Arthur Miller, and he's back on our screens as Irvin Welsh's tortured detective inspector, Ray Lennox, in the brilliant crime. It's a thrill to welcome fellow Pfeiffer, Degree Scott. Thank you very much. Uh, Edith, fellow Pfeiffer, uh, fantastic to be here back in Glasgow this evening with all you people. I'm sure you're all very drunk by this stage. Um, disturbing horror, drag racing and Dickens are on show in these outstanding performances. Who said Variety was dead? Let's take a look. Actress, film. Tamara Lawrence, Kindred. The family that I'm staying with, I think they broke my phone and, and they put something in my tea. What do you mean by something? Uh, some kind of tablet. And I, I, I'm confused all the time, not just dizzy. I think they're giving me something. Look, look, I think I'm going to need your help. Marley Sue, run. Where's Kit? Here. Where is he? Is that him? Fit you doing here then? I was bowling. No, you were not. I was thinking about it. About bowling? Aye. He 
Can you dump me? Oh, no, 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 shoo, shoo, shoo. No young men needed here. I've got a garden fork. I'm not just a young no, man. I'll no. summon the constable. Tilda Swinton. The personal history of David Copperfield. No. Listen! You're my aunt. Janet! I I'm your nephew. I'm, I'm David Copperfield from the rookery. Mr. Dick! I've been ill-used and, uh, and, and put to work not fit for me, and you're the only family I have. Come inside, come inside. Amazing actresses, every one of them. And the BAFTA Scotland Award goes to Marley Sue. <laughs> Thank you, BAFTA Scotland, for um, putting me in a sentence with Tamara Lawrence and Tilda Swinton, because they're amazing. Um, didn't think this was going to happen. Um, thank you, everyone who made Run, because it's the best job I've ever had, and that's because of the people that made it, because they're all incredible, um, especially Kira and Rosie and Margaret, who were incredible producers and just made it the happiest set. Um, Mark Stanley. <laughs> I... Um, you taught me so much and you're such a generous actor and person and this is the only time I'm going to be nice to your face so <laughs> um, thank you Scott Graham uh, again the best director I've ever worked with he was um, incredibly creative and he was bucket list with me so I can't believe I got to work with him um, really quickly sorry if I'm taking up time <laughs> oh thank you um, um, thank you to um, Sam and Sophie and Joe and um, Ruby and Cleo and Ray and Tasman and my mum. Thank you for going to all the empty cinemas and all the empty theatres over the years to see whatever I'm doing. <laughs> um, and thank you to my dad who'd be there too if he could be. Thank you. <laughs> Folks, that's all. 18 awards, a ton of excitement, maybe the odd tier or two, and a worthy celebration of extraordinary talent. I'm Edith Bowman. It has been my absolute pleasure to introduce the celebration of the best in Scottish achievement in film, television and games on behalf of BAFTA Scotland. Thank you to our presenters and supporters, all our wonderful crew behind the scenes as well, and to you at home for watching and for voting as well. Please keep safe. Shall we do it again, same time next year, shall we? Thank you so much, everybody. Take care. Good night. Thank you. Thank you so much.